look at Psalm 110. That's the reason why last week Friday, I told you, I said you some of our people, including me, that are growing in age biologically as an example, you, you, you will see imprinted on us some of the things that I'm saying. You cannot try, you, people who have grown, you cannot threaten them with anything in the word of God anymore. <laughs> you can't use anything to threaten them. Nothing can threaten them anymore. She so said, the spirit of the Lord is moving here. They have seen many moves of the spirit of God. They just say, mm. uh, pastor, finish what you want to finish. Let me. They have calculated their life and mapped out their strategy in such a way that where they put God is where God belongs. Sit down very well. Nothing really stimulates them. That's the reason why somebody calls them. At the slightest call that is a job on Sunday, they don't think twice before they say, I take it. So I will watch the message. I will watch the replay of the message. The replay is not as effectual as being present. It is the truth. You want to know how football feels, how football, football match feels, go to the stadium. The one you are, the one you are watching on the television, psh. Go to the stadium. You will feel it. You will, if there is silence, you it palpable. If there is noise, it's so thick you can cut it with a knife. As a matter of fact, as I play sometimes, your uh, 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 what do they call it? Internal? What do they call external? Whatever that uh, confuses your television. Your, uh, you know, <laughs> you know. But in the stadium, you are watching them like this. You are watching every gesture. You are watching everything. That's the reason why, you see, football was not sweet anymore during COVID-19 lockdown. Even the footballers were not coming in with styles, with their style. They just play anyhow. And they will play once. They will say, I have COVID. They will not come back <laughs> six weeks. <laughs> but this one that they know that there are stakes on them, that are, their family members are coming to watch them. You see the way they style their hair and everything. There is something about gathering in the presence of God with the people of God, doing the minutest things that they can be done, which translate to the mysteries of God being unleashed on people. And there comes a time people say, it's not about gathering, it's not, a, you know, I can get God anywhere. You cannot get God anywhere. I, I bet you, you cannot. I always have case studies over everything that I, that I want to propound theories about, and I place them before me. Case studies that I placed before me. I look at the life of Adeboye. I look at the life of Kumuyi. I look at the life of Oyedepo. I look at the life of Walioke. I look at the life of Chris. And I say, these people have conquered all spheres of life. Many of them are scientists. Pastor D.K. Olukoya is not longer Dr. Olukoya. He's, a professor, he's Professor Olukoya. He still practice what genetic, he has his PhD in genetic whatever. Eh? Genetic something. He, he lectures that thing in the university. He has a university. Mountain of Fire Miracle has a university called Mountain Top Universities. I don't mean Christian University, I mean university. The Redeemer's University. Of the redeemed Christian church of God. He swing from Pastor Adeboye. He's re university. It's not Christian Bible School University. Covenant University is one of the best universities on earth. Precious Cornerstone University by Bishop Walioke. Pastor Chris has several institutes everywhere. Has a university in the Republic of Benin. Klein there Stanley without putting his name. But he's the, he's the chancellor of the university in the Republic of Benin. Mr. Tit. Are you, are you listening to what I'm saying? You, you talk about anything, whether spiritual or physical, because you will, God has several courts. But to retain or to regain the strength of your youth, 
You need being planted foolishly. Stupidly. Because it is not possible to follow God wisely. Lafayette, you heard me. It is not possible to follow God wisely. If you keep telling all your parents the kind of money that you give to God, they will stop you and your destiny will be stopped. Somebody kept telling the mom and the mom called me one day. Uh, they get home around 3 a.m. It is not possible to really be engaging God at you will not have some night time. Whether night out in the night vigil in the church or night time where you are praying and they say you are supposed to sleep. If Jesus, stay all night praying. Some other day, hell in the morning. Some other time, in the evening. Because God can define you at any point in time. Wise people don't follow God. Only dead people follow him. You can't follow God with wisdom. We follow him by faith. Faith and wisdom are not, two, are not the same things. They are word and opposite. Many of the times, don't, doesn't have fact. Because the Bible says, hope that is sin is no longer hope. How can they tell somebody, leave your father and your mother to the land that I will show you, not to the land that I have shown you. First of all, let me see it on the map so that I compare and contrast with where I am to see which one is better. Is that not how do you move away from one job to another? And they are calling you in one job. They say, come and do interview. You're not comparing. Here they give me 55. This one they want to give me 57. But I need to be driving to Cork every weekend. <laughs> you now compare and contract. Abraham could not compare and contract. The Bible says he believed God and it was counted for him for righteousness. God, you will have to follow God by faith. Which is the foolishness of the spirit. And the foolishness of God is wiser than men. The foolishness of God that you will follow is wiser than men. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit down at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Go on. The Lord has sent the rod of his strength out of Zion, root out in the midst of his enemies. Go on. The pe thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. It takes power to be willing. Many people want to be willing, but they cannot be willing. <laughs> I was watching a boxing bout and Mike Tyson was the one analyzing it and they, 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 that, that robust uh, Mexican boxer hit Joshua, the first person that inflicted Joshua, Anthony Joshua with his first ever defeat in the United States hit Joshua in the temple and Joshua wanted to respond back to be, but his body was tearing apart you know, and Mike Tyson said you know, when you get to the point you, your brain wants to coordinate and hit back. He's actually, he says he's conscious of what he's doing. He wants to hit back. He said, but the body is going in another direction. He, the person now came back, give another one. And he's still trying to do, he, he, in his mind, he knows that the person is bringing a punch and he wants to dodge it. Up. But the body goes to say, give me more. <laughs> You will just come to a point in life and you discover that you want to be willing, but you cannot be willing. And if you're willing and obedient, you shall hear the good of the land. Isaiah 119. He come, I want you to listen to me. It comes to a time you want to be willing, but you cannot be. He said it is in the day of your power that people shall be willing. And then, he now say, in the beauty of holiness from the womb of the body, thou hast the dew of thy youth. You will get to churches. You will meet people jumping up and down in the choir and whatever. And then you'll be looking for people with gray hair. They are wanting. Why? Because there are two different kind of ecosystem. One produces willingness. One chokes the calling. I will show you. One chokes the calling. One chokes the anointing. One chokes the strength. One chokes the power. One chokes everything that will make you to be willing. In the day of your power that people shall be willing. How did they gather that power? Is where Berela read to us. Chapter 40 from verse 30 of Isaiah. They wait on the Lord. 
He takes foolishness to wait on another person. I was telling my wife that um, going to Nigeria, hence, I saw a car, a very good BMW. I said, I want to buy it because when I'm in Nigeria, Reverend Sago will wait on me even if it is two weeks or three weeks. He will be using his car to drive me around. This is a man who has his businesses, who has his churches, who has many things, his outreaches, he's into many things. As he's receiving, he, he can receive about 150 calls in a day. As he's receiving different calls, my body is paining me. Even as well as with Bishop, and the program is going on, he's receiving many calls and he's, 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 he's you know, and say, it's not the most, it's not the most pleasant thing to wait on anybody. It's not the most pleasant thing to wait on anybody. You understand what I'm saying? It's not to wait on anybody. And the Bible says, those that wait upon the Lord, he takes foolishness of faith to wait upon God. Somebody once told me, he said, eh, you're just asking us, come to the church every day, what shall I eat? What shall I drink? What shall I do whatever? What shall I do this? What shall I do that? You know, and the Bible talks about that in Mark chapter 4. Let's see from verse 19. Mark chapter 4. There's an ecosystem that produces power that leads to willingness to retain or regain your youth. There's another ecosystem that chokes the source of power, the source of strength. So even if you want to be willing, you cannot, even though you like to be willing. Look at it. Go from verse 18. Go from verse 18. Go from verse, let's, let's go back a little bit. Okay, yo, these are the day which are sown among tongues. Such as hear the word. Are you listening to me, Mercy? They have the call of God also. To even go to the place where you will hear the word of God is because you want it. You like it. They heard the word. Go on. They accepted the word. They want the word to work. But there's an ecosystem. What is this ecosystem? Look at it. And the chaos of this world. I want you to read it very well. I'm not the one who spoke it. It is Jesus. You have to be able to learn how to separate from existential matters. From the chaos of this world. And sometimes even existential matters. Matter over which man really exists. And that without which the life of a man is not really worth living. There are times they turn to the chaos of this world. There's a thin line in between. Somebody was asking me. I said, oh, yeah, if I want to be coming for morning prayer, if I want to be coming for this, so how do I do it with my children, with my this? I said, I said they may be sleeping. <laughs> I said, the children that are sleeping today are the ones that will give you sleepless night tomorrow. You learn today to drag them to the places where God wants you to be. You drag them. How can you give them conveniences? The conveniences they ask you to give them in this country. It will make them put their trousers here at age 17 and comes to you and be sleeping with guests inside your house. And you one woman was talking on television. It's an Irish woman. And he said the most painful day of her life was the day. That a guy, a guy followed a girl to the house, to the flower, a girl, and she was in the noise. It's an Irish woman. It's not a Christian, or it's not a born again, or it's not a Pentecostal. It might be a Christian. With tears, we pay. With tears, we pay. Mothers hear their children raping guests in the house. They cannot call police. They cannot go out. Then I say, a day, a day. Say, this because of a day that you said you cannot go to church on Sunday morning. That a day is sleeping, like to sleep in the morning. You know, a day must dictate to you. A day likes to sleep in the morning. Now, a day is not giving you sleepless night. What do you 
do with Ade early enough? So that a day from being an existential matter does not become the chaos of this life. It's like some of you that want to get married. You turn marriage from being an existential matter to the things of the chaos of this life. People say, oh yeah, the reason why our wedding has not been heard is because we are still looking for money. I say, look for money to do wedding. No. I say, How, why do you look for money to do wedding? If you don't have it, you don't have it. What you have is what you wed with. Who has ever told anybody that you cannot marry because they come like this to the place of wedding? That's what you have. How did you think that Elias attended the wedding of uh, 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 Rebecca and Isis, Isaac that was not assisted? Isaac didn't come to the wedding. The only thing Isaac came for was to sex that lady. The first day he saw the lady, he just took her to the tent of the mother and said he was converted. Which kind of convert? Which kind of comfort? The first day. He didn't say, how are you? How's your mother? How's your father? He just took her. He was meditating on the feet. He just said, hey. And the guy said, is this the one? And the guy came down also. He was, he was already ready. Because they have traveled for three months. <laughs> she, can, she can't endure this as she bed. You understand what I'm saying? Are you listening to what I'm saying? He said, we want to make it a, a really sizable wedding. We need 10,000. To do what? It has become chaos of this life. He said, that's why we're working and uh, we're getting some money from the credit union. To do what? Our wedding was held inside our church. The most important part of our wedding was inside the court. And we already prayed there and took Holy Communion. It's people that forced me that we must do in the church. It's the pastors in this city. They say, it's not good. I say, okay, come and do. And it was a Sunday service. It was a Sunday service that we were doing it and we danced and they, and they take offering for church. Inside our church that, you go and look at the picture of the wedding. Wedding doesn't make a marriage. It's marriage that makes wedding beautiful. No matter how beautiful your wedding was, if your marriage is ugly, the wedding is not good. Everybody will be cursing the day it happened. But because your marriage is good, you know, so, uh, when we got married, I only bought a ring of five euro for my wife. Everybody now wants to use that style. He said, the chaos of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the loss of other things entry choke the world and it becomes unfruitful. When I told you that the calling of God and evaporate, that is what you are saying. Are you here with me? What did I tell you Colin can do? Can evaporate. The calling of God, can, the calling you are feeling when you got born again. He said, hold fast that we have. Lest another man take away your crown. It is that little thing you are holding to. Like the you head on. As soon as he got born again. He discovered he could play keyboard. He's been playing keyboard for us at GMIT. Since he got born again. He's been part of the executive since 2015. Since early 2015, he's been part of the executive. It will be 10 years next year. <laughs> An executive, uh, as follower of Pastor David and uh, Pastor Mirella, and after some time, we made that under our supervision, made that president. Then he became president of other people when we moved out. And then he began to supervise other people. Now he's the president of NUIG. Only to finish next year. His next year is finishing. Ten years of serving on campus. Playing keyboard. He translated it to the church. Now you can't want to do anything now and forget it. Little, little things. He held on to it. It became a great calling. That's how Theophilo started. What is that body that is standing in your heart? Holy Ghost afflict me. Is that song? Is that you, you want to invite a musician? You Messi Chivo is not there. You want to be unhappy. <laughs> but Theophilus will scatter the he, he's a he's a body bearer, he's a prophet. <laughs> he will do his water like <laughs> he's a mortal millionaire by saying hockey ho he ho Many of his mates that are economists, they are looking for job everywhere around the street. I shall not serve my enemy. Say after me, 
I shall not serve my enemy. I shall not serve my desire. In the name of Jesus. My desires are serve me. In the name of Jesus. Are you listening to what I'm saying? There's a way. There's an, there's an ecosystem of God that can produce everything you need. It doesn't mean that you're going to be a preacher holding microphone everywhere. But it means that no matter what you do, God is going to be glorified through it. But you must be planted in the house of God first. You must foolishly follow God for all of your life. To, re to retain or regain your youth, you must be a child forever. When you begin to grow out of childhood in Christ Jesus, just know that something is wrong. You don't grow out of childhood because you are now three years old in the Lord. Because you are now 10 years old in the Lord. Because you are now 20 years old in the Lord. The person you are serving is called the ancient of days. In his presence, everybody is still a very little child. Everybody. And I come to that fellowship, only young people there cannot be there. I have many things to do with my life. Why is it that what you are trying to do with your life is not producing? Why is it not producing? I just want to know. I have examples in this church. Bro, Mike came to me one day and said, when he came back, he said, pray for me, pastor. I need, I need fire of God for continuity. Fire of God to be consistent. Because, you know, pastor, pastor, I know when you go, go and pick Cody, he was not totally born again that time. You know, you know, I see Reki, and I see their life just moving on. They have wife, they have children. What I'm trying to accomplish now, these little boys, these little boys, they're just, they just accomplishing it. He said, I see their life. I see the consistency of their life. I see how it's moving upward. I say it's like that, but I, I say, but I told you that time. But you now see that as your lives are moving upward, you see that the life of your pastor also is moving upward. Why? Because I learned from the strength of your youth. The best way to be a young person is to hang around young people. If they're always stupid and foolish in your ears, you'll be old, 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 old. Even God himself will not have use of you. How a coach, 82-year-old coach, retains his youth is that when he can no longer play football, he becomes a coach. Whether he knows it or not, he will still be playing. Only on the sideline. Because I say, yes, yes, come. Sometimes they pass the ball to him on the sideline. He races, he races. That's when you know that the skill is still there. They the pass it. <laughs> But as he see them moving his leg, moving their leg, he's trying to move his own leg also. It's very hard for him to not be on the wheelchair. Very hard. But from the moment you, you hang your boot at 31, you say, oh, uh, it's a lot of difficulties. You start drinking. You'll be like Yokozuna. The next time they will see you, they will think it's elephantiasis. That is your problem. Don't you see Ronaldo? Ronaldo now. R, R9. Don't you see Ronaldinho? Ronaldo has now come down now because he bought a club, uh, you know. But he just became so big. Ronaldinho also. I will look at him and I say, is this Ronaldinho? I'm older than him by age. I'm older than him. He just go to a club. And he's now becoming, if you see and each of the legs, I say, oh, it's not in my lifetime you are supposed to be like this. But you see people like Sinidin today. His head is still in football. The tricks are still there. He still stays slim. What about Asenwenga? That Asna coach. Maybe that guy is around 82. They were playing football somewhere recently. If you see the way he nutmeg this uh, Sinidin today. As it is in the physical world, that is how it is in the spiritual world. Only an old man, look at it, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. He said, I have no pleasure in them anymore. For God to use you, you must be fillable on a daily basis. Not that you are filled. God doesn't fill the field. And you know a fool is always full. A fool. A fool, F-O-O-L, -F is always F-U-L-L. -L. 
A fool is always full. He's already satisfied. He's already filled to the brim. And you don't feel the fuel, the field, or the fool. You must come before the Lord and ask God, in which ways should I get involved? What else do? And there is there are always works if you are a laborer. There are always works that God can use if you are a laborer. God is not looking for chief executive. <laughs> 